Jefferson Jr. from Battlestar Galactica and uh, Apollo 13 and Outbreak. Hoping you're having a great uh, spring season and I want to wish you well. God bless you. Bye bye. Enbox Forte has managed to maneuver our way over here in Chiller. And this is Chiller and it's April and it's 1998. And you know, we're doing it again. Oh, Steve, I am Zenbach. Hi, the great Zenbach. How are you doing? Nice to see you again. Good. Um, so, how you like Chiller? Very busy, very packed. Hey, it's great. It's a real blast. I get to see you bring some of the toys with you, huh? Oh, yeah. I brought some of the toys with me. Yeah, stuff from Doctor Who. So, you know, I'm here with all the bits and pieces. Yeah, you know, we have, my son has a time machine. He kind of borrowed one of those little things. Ours looks like an old New York phone booth, but uh, that's our variation. But anyway, tell my people uh, what you've been up to and what you're showing here anyway at uh, Chiller. Okay, well, I was in Doctor Who. I played the Cyber Controller in a BBC special, 30 Years in the TARDIS. I've also been a Dalek. I've been a couple of Cybermen, a couple of other monsters. But my main, main four day is um, I'm an effects artist. I actually build the things. I'm going to give away a great trade secret here. What you do is you build a costume to fit. They pay you for that. Then they get you to wear the costume and they pay you again because it fits you. As a trade secret. Is this going out live? Cut. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Work again. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get a Dalek to fit? Ah, great question. No, it's actually built original BBC specifications. Um, not many people know this, but originally the BBC had, I think, four of them. And as the years went by, they started four, they started to creak a bit. Then came to people like myself and said, hey, we're doing this special, we have no Daleks. Well, the ones we have are absolutely terrible. Can somebody build us some? So I collaborated with a friend of mine who has an original BBC Dalek. We stripped the thing apart, and basically this thing is now 100% correct to the original 63 specifications. We even turned around and we got hold of the original mesh for the next section where the operator looks out. Right, right. Believe it or not, it's actually supplied by a company who supplies the mesh for Rolls Royce. It is actually the same mesh used in Rolls Royce loudspeaker grills. So there you go. It's the Rolls Royce of aliens. <laughs> the dogs are one of my favorite. They, I just I love the, I love their little dialogue about uh, when they chase people around. Oh yes, exterminate, exterminate. Yes. Yeah, I know you mean. yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah. That always said to will chill up my spine. Yeah. You know. It's done by a guy sitting backstage. He's got a device called a ring modulator, and he does it. He has a little okay. screen, and he cues it when the actors flash the lights in the Dalek. He kind of times it so he does a voice over the same. Right. So that's how that's done. My Daleks actually have a little voice box inside. So I got fed up. With, you've got to have like ten sets of arms to work these things. All little rods and the light. You've got to flash the lights. I thought the hell with this. Pardon my French. I'll put a voice box in, so all my dice have a little voice box in, so you speak into there, and I like flashing synchronization, so... It sounds like it keeps you busy too, huh? I wish! Yeah. <laughs> oh, we gotta, have a, we gotta bring back those Daleks and all. Oh, yeah. you, you know. I'm a very busy guy, yeah. 
was the last time you got into one of these things? Oh, about six weeks ago. Just really? for the hell of it. It's a two-man job to get into it. Um, you kind of have to take the top off, and you sit in it, and some guy puts it back on again. So usually we don't have time to play. So I thought, I'm going to get in there for old time's sake. So actually one genuine BBC Dalek made it over with me from Great Britain, and now resides in New Jersey with me. So, you know, he's kind of retired. Let me ask you something. Um, out here, we used to show Doctor Who every week. And they haven't, they haven't shown any of the repeats or anything. You, what has been going on with it? Did they actually pull the series or is it still currently running? Um, it tends to show on the PBS networks over here. And I think what happened was it kind of, the BBC may have wanted a bit of money for it. And people over here that are powers to be thought, yeah, we're not going to pay that. But they do fundraisers every so often they show it. It gets picked up here and there. But now uh, BBC now has their own cable network, which they've just introduced over here, right. which is really cool, but it's only in a couple of areas at the moment. And from what I understand off the internet, another great device, they do show Doctor Who on a regular basis on it. So get on there, guys, so haunt your local cable stations and say, hey, get BBC America as part of the broadcasting schedule and show Doctor Who. Thereby, I get paid more money. So <laughs> I, I tell you, the, the I went to one convention and in like middle of the night they showed the, some of the old, the first Doctor Who's. And yeah, I, I loved them. They were, you know, the um, I think what I liked about it was the fact that it was it was pure science fiction and story, and that the use of your imagination of one environment led into another, like multi-layered environments. Yeah, it was. It basically started out as a historical program. And they always said, we don't want any bug-eyed monsters. And series two, the second story, you had the Daleks. Uh, and the Powers of E said, oh no, we can't do this again. But it was so successful, it kind of graduated from more of a historical leaning. Like stories like Marco Polo, the gunfighters, OK Corral. More aliens came in. It became more of like a pure science fiction during the 60s and 70s and right in the 80s. And it was a great show. Really wonderful. We have a spaceship on the dark side of the moon. It doesn't work. Our, our dark side, we have a, our viewpoint outside is a casino that the aliens started building, but they lost the building permit, so it's been abandoned. But I, yeah, I got to make sure there's no Daleks in my ship, though. I've got Borg in there, but we always worry about things like Daleks. You never know what runs around. Well, tell you, I'll send a couple of cyber troopers over, maybe we can check the ship out for you. Uh, maybe the casino, or maybe there's another building permit. Hey, we could get together on this, make some money, open up a casino. Hey, you know. We'll have you over, get you some tea. Yeah. <laughs> sure, we'll get a cup of tea. Uh, some pie clits. Hey, we're there. You got it. You got it. Well, I appreciate your time. I really thank you very much. No problem. Great to meet you. Stop by again. Thank you. You know what's wrong with the door side of the Hi, I'm Shiva. So Shiva, what do you think of Chilla this year? I love it. This is my first time here, and I'm having an absolutely fabulous time. Yeah. Yes, and you? Oh, I've been here a couple of years, and uh, I'm going to play tonight, in fact, do some music here. Really? Yeah, I got oh, the band. Fabulous. Yeah. I cannot wait. Yep, we got a galactic boogie band. So a tell true celebrity. No, oh, no, no, the true celebrity. So tell me what you got here. I've got my pictures from Mortal Kombat, Shiva. I'm the fighting machine with four arms that uh, doesn't fight. Um, but uh, I've got a few of those, uh, a couple movies that I've done, Ballistic and the Philadelphia Experiment 2, and uh, just a couple of my favorite personals that I like. So, you, uh, you have a good crowd coming in and out here all day. Yeah, it's great. It's a steady flow. Everybody's excited to be here, and uh, we're very happy because it's busy. Yeah. Philadelphia, too. Do you know that they say some of that's based on a real incident? Yes. You heard it? Yes, because the original was based on a true incident. We had a fella on our show we interviewed about the Montauk experiment, which is a variation on that. I won't get into all of that, but we did an entire five-part show on that. Right. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. So there's a whole storyline on that. Yeah, I know that there's a guy that tours around um, doing a bunch of different expos. Right, we had him. the Philadelphia Experiment. The uh, the true incident, what really happened, yeah. and uh, I've been meaning to see him and haven't haven't caught up with him yet. Yeah, well, I appreciate you giving me some time. You know, absolutely, you're Anytime. looking great, and pictures thank are looking you. great. Thank you. You know, you're looking mm -hmm. great. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you know, they tell they keep telling me it's the ears, but yes. I don't know. I you don't know. You know, there's something about a man with pointed ears that just I know, you know sends a chill up your spine. Yeah. <laughs> we see that's what it is. Chiller theater. It is chiller theater. Well, thank you very yes, much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I know it, and it was like, I was thinking of you yesterday, and you all of a sudden appeared. I know, I, last time I had told you to save yourself from me because of that, that Vulcan thing, but, you know, what can I say, I got another five years to go, so. Oh, you know. okay, five years, well, that's not long. Yeah, real quick, what's the last project or the project you're working on? Uh, the last thing, let's see, I went from here last year, I went to Spain and did uh, Marie Cookie and the Killer Tarantula. With your friend over with here. Michelle. Yeah. And another one called The Envoy. And then I went to Vermont and did Moving Targets. I played a prosecutor. Really? Kind of a Marsha Clark. Yeah, Marsha Clark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I did, um, oh, what was it? Oh, Colobos, which is going to be really scary. Really? Yeah. yeah. And another one called Scream Queen. And Chainsaw's made for cutting video. You know, video. we, my Tybok, my little guy, a little blonde haired yeah. guy, met another little boy who is now 11 that knew you. You, so many you've met, but yeah. but he, he, the two of them were comparing notes, and yeah. they, they, I know, and they both, they're both in love with you. You oh. met, and we rented a movie. Uh, it was a pumpkin type of movie, and surprised you were in this thing. Jacko. I yeah, think. yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It amazed me. I didn't expect that. It, you know, but so you also mentioned you did a movie where you uh, another one that weren't uh, getting killed or murdered. Last time I saw you, it was a... Oh, oh, boy. I haven't been murdered in a long time. No, no, yeah. no murders and no, and murders. no, and no you know. Yeah. So, uh, so you've been busy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm staying alive. Yeah. Staying alive. Staying, staying alive. alive. Staying alive. So, well, I won't keep you. You've got another long line. Seems like you girls got the entire convention up here. Yeah, we, um, we tricked them. You, you get them in here. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, just wanted to say thank you for your time on Zenbox. We're now Zenbox Forte. We changed. Forte. Forte. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, French. Yes. Yeah, French guys. Yeah, I yeah. know. Well, all right. Well, thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you, and I'll see you in Soon. my dreams. You, that you will. Yeah. That you will, my dear. <laughs> Mr. Jonathan Hayes, tell me, what you got here? You showing some of the stuff you've done? Well, basically, Little Shop of Horrors is the thing that everybody remembers me from, but Not of This Earth is a, was a big movie. And then I have a couple of things from some of the westerns that I did. Nobody ever remembers me for anything but Little Shop of Horrors. So. Well, we'll talk about that for a minute, because okay. I spoke to a friend of yours, Mel. Oh, sure. Mel yeah. is a great old friend of mine. I saw him two weeks ago. Really? Really? He, he mentioned to me all the spin-off things and the music oh, and, yeah. and, and, and the production and the time. And, you know, mm -hmm. how'd you find working in that? Oh, it was so much fun. It yeah. really was fun. It was hard work, but we were having fun. We were doing what we wanted to do, make movies, you know? Yeah. Besides the making movies, was there a lot of humor behind the movie? Oh, absolutely. God, can you, can you imagine? We, we shot all the principal photography in two days. Uh, it's amazing. It's I amazing. Know. You know, well, you watch the movie, and it's just amazing. I can't believe a two-day production on that, right. but, it, but it, it, it's just... No. So much uh, has been done in the spin-offs and music. And oh, it, it's had got so much notoriety that it's opened doors for me my whole life. You know, I starred in that movie for four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. scale was two ninety. I thought I was doing great. I was making <laughs> way over scale, <laughs> and uh, I made more money selling photographs of myself from the movie, movie yesterday that I made for doing the movie. That's incredible. That's incredible. And of course, it was before residuals too. So. Yeah. No, well, nothing. That was it. Four hundred bucks. Yeah. We'll talk about the westerns. All right. We we've never done westerns on my show, so yeah. that'll be interesting. Well, so. I did uh, Five Guns West with Dorothy Malone and John Lund, in which I played a nasty little guy. I did a movie called Gunslinger, which I don't have a still from, with uh, John Ireland so and you, you, Beverly Garland. You do one of these? I had guns of my own. Mm. I. They gave me the first Western I did. They gave me a gun that was so stiff I couldn't cock it. Really? So I went out and I got a gun and I had it honed down and fixed. Like so now all the fast draw guys right. have, but I was the original fast draw. I, that gun was beautiful. I still have it. As really? Well, but, really? Yeah. I would have brought it, but they won't let me on the airplane with it. Really? Well, yeah, I gotta understand that. <laughs> I understand. Well, you know, you know, the, the art of westerns. I haven't really seen anything. It's not like a current thing anymore. They don't do westerns anymore. Yeah. I don't know. It just. I guess they're not violent enough, and there's not enough uh, there's not not enough opportunity for big special effects. Today, the movies are all about special effects, and then they write a movie around it. You know, I had somebody mention to me they were studying westerns, and they said that High Noon was one of those to study. I, I don't know. You have any, movie. You like beautiful it? movie? Yes. Yeah. Gary Cooper was the epitome of sheriffs. Yeah. You know? So, but what's with this uh, this head it, coming out of a? Uh, uh -uh. In Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, 
At the end of the movie, after they've discovered that I've killed all these people and fed them to the plant, there's a big chase scene through downtown Los Angeles, Skid Row, the tire yards and everything. It ends up in a toilet yard, <laughs> yard full of old abandoned toilets. So I hide in the toilet. So that's me after they've left looking out. It, how does it feel to almost be upstaged by a plant? Well, Good question. It feels kind of uh, strange. I mean, but you know, our plant wasn't as uh, as big or ferocious as the plant in the remakes. Yeah. I mean, we only had ten dollars to spend on a plant. <laughs> <laughs> but in the other hand, the plant didn't upstage us as bad as when I saw the Broadway production. That was a plant. Man. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it must have been some staging to keep that thing moving every day. Yeah. But I didn't. I didn't think that the that the uh, stage play nor the movie the, the of the musical were as interesting as our movie. Yeah, well, look at I the think, actors you had in there. Yeah, but I think also they removed the, a lot of the sleaze factor, and they took away Mushnik's uh, ethnicity. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that was part of the fun. You do uh, other conventions similar to this uh, around the country? I've done a few on the West Coast, uh, and that's it. This is the first one I've done where I had to travel. Let me ask you this, all right. I've been the chiller. And I'm familiar with the East Coast. My viewers out here are familiar with that. What goes on in sci-fi conventions and horror, or horror conventions, I should say, in the West Coast? I mean, you know, like where, it, and ba when? Basically the same. There are. They have more. I mean, uh, there's one called Hollywood Collector Show that does four shows a year in Los Angeles at the Beverly Garland Hotel. It's very, very good, but it's very, very crowded, and they have hundreds of people signing. I mean, it's just too much. Downstairs is a, a mayhem down there. I haven't been downstairs. You don't want to go downstairs. I, yeah, I you could use a plant down there right now to clean it up. I, I hear the party's going to be good tonight, though. Guess who's playing the party? Who? This is Zenbach and a Galactic Boogie Band. I'm playing between the bands. Oh, great. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. We're making our debut there. <laughs> the rumor has it we might be fanged by the end of the night with the oh, teeth, boy. you know. Yeah. But uh, so you, basically, you, you can repeat a circuit and show people and meet fans. And oh, yeah. This is great. I love it. You yeah. know, I mean, I meet so many people. Plus, I've seen people at this convention that I've seen on in the West Coast conventions. In other words, yeah. the collectors that just travel and do these things. I often refer to this as like an external, an extended family, because it's a mobile community of people that are interested in the movies and right. uh, the characters as well as the actors and the history behind them. Yeah. In Hollywood, though, you, the, the public is much more kind of inured to the business because it's happening under their noses, you know? Right. But here, these fans are more open and more gracious, and, and they tell you how much they love you, you yeah. know? Uh, in California, they're more callous. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe it's that smog. That could be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And we're, we're in the other part of Jersey. There's another part of Jersey which has these refineries, so I'm glad we're away from that. Yeah. You know, it's much nicer here. Well, I appreciate your time. Oh, it's been wonderful. You know, I thank you very much. You. Thank you. And I'm really enjoying this show. I think it's great. Great. I hope you make it a regular part of your, your trips. Well, that, that's up to Kevin. Well, that's up to Kevin. Well, we do this in October. So talk to Kevin and tell him you'd like to have me come back. Well, you know what? That. You know what? Kevin gets a copy of the show. You know what? What? We just did. Okay. Good. You heard that, Kevin. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to be moving on on Zenbox Forte. Hey, there's even, even Westerns, even pictures of Westerns here. Not all monsters. Hey. You know? And I'm going to get up, and we'll be seeing you. Thank you. Hello there. I'm Zenbach. Hi, I'm Leslie Colton. Tell me, Leslie, so what are you doing here at Chiller besides showing off the goodies? Oh, I'm here uh, promoting a project called Virgin Blood, which is filming in September about Catholic schoolgirl vampires. <laughs> Virgin Blood. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Tasty young blood in, in a Catholic school? Yeah, exactly. Wow, with wow. A, with a little hot stripping action thrown in just for some variety. So, what do you play in this movie? A nun? Uh, no, I'm going to be one of the Catholic schoolgirls. You're going to be one of the Catholic schoolgirls. You get bitten? Yeah, I become a vampire. You become a vampire. And uh, when's this going to be out? Uh, well, it's filming in September, so we're looking at like maybe a December release. Yeah, so it'll be a fall type of release then. Yeah. You know, so excited about it? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. my first. First? My first, yeah. 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 Oh. I, I'm, a, I'm a virgin. I've never done it. So. You've never done it. Yeah. Well, you're going to well. be, you're going to be, <laughs> well, you'll be doing it. You know, and uh, so you got vamps on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, same That's about vampire strippers. Vampire strippers. <laughs> yeah. They're vamping. All righty. Well, your stuff is looking good. I'm sure you're having a ball here, at Chiller. Oh yeah. 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 What you got on the table? We can show some of it to our uh, our audience. Let's see. Oh, good. No, I haven't. I was 
Spams. Alrighty. Nice. And, and who's these beautiful blondes here on this on the table? That's me. That's you. I think I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thank you for your time. Thank you. You know. You take care. Okay. Well, Zenbach has managed to find himself in a hot situation again. Ooh, you're so cute. You know what turns me on? Pointy hair. Oh, you know, I get a reaction to that. <laughs> so, let me see. I've got Debbie. And Debbie? Yes. That's it. I'm Debbie D. Debbie D. And she's Debbie Dutch. Yeah. And together we are the Double Ds. We're everywhere. The everywhere, everywhere. And now we're really everywhere. You got it. Out of it. <laughs> so, you, you guys are chiller and you got your stuff on the table. Yes. So, how you find chiller? It's the best show in the universe. Chiller is, is killer. <laughs> Chiller is I killer. I fly all the way from Los Angeles to come to this show. Really, really? Los Angeles and you're also Vegas, that area too? Oh yeah, I got this outfit in Vegas this last past weekend. Really? Check Wait. it out. So cute. <laughs> chains and all too. And my oh, no, these chains are from not from my Vegas. Miami. No? But I love to chain you up, baby. Oh, I'm going to be a Vulcan chain. I'm telling I'm telling it's the hot corner guys. It is hot here. Sizzling. So tell so tell me what you guys do. We're actresses. Oh 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 <laughs> she got the tongue going there. Uh oh oh oh, oh 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 <laughs> you guys are absolutely looking hot. I think you're hot too. Really? They say yeah. they said chicks like the ears. What do you think? Does yeah. it work? Oh my god, such a turn on. Uh -huh. You know, anything uh -huh. that's uh -huh. erupt. Uh Zenbach <laughs> is beaming out of here. Bye, everybody, oh, on oh, Zenbox Forte. Oh, no. Oh, no. Michael Berryman. We're Hi. here at, uh, where are we? We're at this place, uh, Chiller, in the Chill Theater in New Jersey, of all places. That's right, my first trip to Jersey. This is the, uh, the uh, Susan Clements and uh, uh, Mark Clements, right? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Not Mark, not Mark. Not Mark. Not Mark. Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Clement. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the years, folks. It's yeah, the it's years. the years, it's the years. <laughs> It's been a long day, you know. We've been. Yeah, I'm having fun. I've had trouble going through the beamer today, so you know, beaming in and out. So I have. I see pictures of your work, and uh, feel like sharing with my viewers some of the things you've been doing. And uh, I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, well, I, uh, I I just most recently uh, been on. Well, I'll let you come in on that. This is. Uh, from Lethal Wizards, the episode, it'll air on May 9th on UPN, from uh, Conan, the adventurer, with uh, Ralph Mueller. And I, I play a wizard, we have some fun, and uh, one of the main characters dies. I can't tell you who. You'll have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I see you over here a horn. That uh, hurt? No, actually, this was a wonderful film. It was The Barbarians, uh, directed by Ruggiero Deodato. We filmed it in Rome. This is from Star Trek IV, uh, The Voyage Home. And what I've been doing uh, over the last 24 years, I uh, get to do some films once in a while. I have um, uh, some projects that are, we're hoping to get funded. Uh, a horror film called uh, Slice, with, uh, directed by Mark Pavia. So we hope to get that uh, going uh, sometime later this year. You get to do the shows in the West Coast as well as New York? I, I've done East Coast, West Coast, uh, Chicago. Um, I really I enjoy 
the fans. I enjoy people that uh, that like uh, you know horror films. The They're shows the shows look about the same. The crowds look about the same. Mm, for the Chiller Theater, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a uh, probably been the most delightful show I've done in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having a good time. Um, things that I do most recently, uh, I, I do a lot of ch charity work. I'm, I'm working with uh, uh, the Bogey Creek Gang in Orlando, Florida, sponsored by Paul Newman, General Schwarzkopf, and Arnold Palmer. It's a, it's a uh, it's a camp where parents come with children that have facial cranial birth defects. I've been through situations like that myself, and uh, we give the children an opportunity to understand what life is really about, what's really important in life, you know. Priorities. Yeah, absolutely. I work on the cancer support team in Palmdale, California. I have also have been with the Wolf Mountain Sanctuary for 15 years. It's a non-kill, uh, non-profit. They, they live until they die of old age for, for wolves. Um, I, I, I believe very strongly that uh, we all live on a planet together. We need to learn and share and appreciate it or we'll lose it. That's part of what the my show is about: is is the uh, zest for life, individuality, and, and being kind to your planet as well yes. as your people. You know, I have myself I'm into huskies, which are similar to wolves. I love, so I love I love the dog, the motions, and the, and all. I guess what I want to stress here to my viewers is this is a horror convention, and it's sci-fi, and when we get down to it, there's a payback and a uh, charity runs in the sci-fi venue that we have charities that are connected in different conventions and that each of the actors actually have a passion for something that usually has something to do with their life and they have a tendency to actually extend out with their time. And I think the time is the precious thing that you can give to a charity. So, uh, yes, time is time and honesty and uh, I'll leave you with this, I made it up. Okay, the thumb to me represents that everything in our life emanates from a higher source, higher than ourselves and everything that we do in our life that we put out will be returned at least threefold. So that's not the reason to do a certain thing, but that's just kind of how the world works. And any time you cut off that source, we uh, kind of meander. We don't have our focus. So um, go see a good scary movie. <laughs> well, I'm here with a typical person from Chiller. Somebody that's, uh, well, he's been looking at me. Rich, I'm Zenbach. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. So, you, you've been feeding on any of the humans? Quite a few. As you can see, I'm a sloppy eater. I, I can tell, you know. Um, I always cry for my victims. I, I, can, I can see that too. Blood. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, but your eye looks bloodshot. Well, I guess it is. I've been up all night and all day. <laughs> How do you manage the days around here? Just overcast? Yeah, and a lot of sunscreen. Yeah, that the F100. Yeah. So what brings you in Chiller? Food? Yes, lots of victims here. Mm. Lots of little tasty victims. Mm. What's the, the most premium type to, to go for here? Young, old, or what? Young. Young? Young ladies. Young ladies. Uh-oh, the Scream Queens are in big trouble. You know, well, I just want to appreciate your time. I see you got a vampire pin and a, a bat and a spider web and a, a nice pentacle with a bat and even a bat on the buckles and my goodness Not everywhere everywhere you're, you're pretty well laced out there mm -hmm. no no crosses uh crosses are fine all right you, you haven't seen Van helsing around here have you uh, i'm looking for him all right if you get him do me a favor bite him yeah i will all right well thank you very much thank you all righty we're gonna head this way while this man feeds i have green blood so you can't have any of that thank you